Training Scout meldet sich von der Diggers and Dealers und ich freue mich jetzt mit Adrian Griffin von Lithium Australia sprechen zu dürfen. Thanks for participating, Adrian. Oh, it was an absolute pleasure. So, could you please give us a short introduction on your person and on the company as well? Oh, okay, I'm a geologist and metallurgist by background. I'm managing director of Lithium Australia and I've been with that company for about four years. Okay, so what does the company do? Where are your projects located? Well, to start with, we've got five projects in Western Australia and we have uh, one soon to be signed up as a joint venture in the Czech Republic. Uh, all of those projects are lithium projects and we've taken a fairly unconventional approach in that we're looking at lithium micas as an ore source rather than spodumene. So spodumene might be quite of interest to many people because it's easy to hard rock mine it. Um, there are brine lithium deposits all over the world, in Chile for example, so what makes your mica deposit special? Uh, the micas are very interesting and I think you've got to look at the uh, conventional processing technology to start with for processing that material. Uh, the micas themselves contain about 3.5% lithium oxide generally, which is a relatively low grade in comparison to something like spodumene that normally has about 6%. The conventional processing flow sheet for spodumene is to roast and leach and traditionally that's what's been done with the micas. The micas having only half the grade really can't wear the cost of the energy input to roast. And as a consequence, it's very difficult to do that commercially. So what we've done is tried to remove the energy step from the equation by developing a hydrometallurgical technique in conjunction with an Australian company, Lepidico, to extract the lithium from the micas. So we don't roast them, we simply uh, crush, grind, float, produce a concentrate of the mica, fine grind and then digest in sulfuric acid. So with the deposit in the Czech Republic, or not, let's not call it deposit by now, so with the project there, um, you're looking for the European market to join in as well, to get to one of the consumer markets? Oh, there's absolutely no doubt about that, and that's driven by the uh, increasing demand for lithium batteries. So do you have any kind of competitors with that kind of technology? Well, it's very interesting. I think one of the things you've got to do is look at the, the cost profile that brine produces. Conventionally, the, the cheapest lithium carbonate produces at about $2,000 a tonne. Uh, the spodumene produces probably four to $5,000 a tonne in general. We believe with the process that we've got, which is very energy efficient, in fact, the, the process becomes an energy exporter. So the, the energy cost is exceptionally low. We can handle tailings materials from other people. So we don't have, under many circum circumstances, a mining cost. And we can get, as a consequence of those very attractive factors, we can get an operating cost for the production of lithium carbonate down to about, well, certainly under $2,000 a tonne. So what do you think about the lithium market in general? Is there any upside potential? The upside potential is huge. It's a, a great question, but I, I think uh, the demand for portable power and power storage from renewables also, uh, those two mar demands are driving the consumption of batteries and that's growing at an enormous rate. So thinking about, talking about driving the cars as well? Oh yeah, the cars, in fact, uh, if you look at the, the number of vehicles produced today, uh, which is about Oh, I think it's about 200,000 uh, electric vehicles per annum produced globally. Uh, that's anticipated to increase to about 40 million by the year 2050. So that is really growing very, very rapidly. So thank you very much for the interview and have good luck exploring your projects. Thank you very much.